it is important to talk to you all today and we had to divide the group into uh, small parts for better engagement also and to ensure that uh, uh, we're not giving anything to each other. So these are really extraordinary times. In my living memory, I have not been confronted with a problem of this kind and of this magnitude. Ordinarily, in a crisis of this scale, people respond in two different ways. One, they start, many start operating from their lowest on one extreme. And on the other, these are also the times when you hear tales of heroism and extraordinary courage from people who choose to operate from their highest. Many such examples, many such examples we have witnessed from healthcare professionals across the globe who have abandoned care for themselves, for their families, and have really gone out, put themselves out there. Imagine you and I are scared of going to hospitals to get a test done right now. And these people are putting themselves out there with those patients, helping everybody who needs that care. Just like healthcare professionals, we share that burden. If there's anybody who comes after them, it is educators, it is teachers, and we'll now have to play the role of caregivers, not just teachers, but truly play the role of caregivers. Yeah. So, there can be several repercussions of us not maintaining a continuity in the student learning experience. Yeah. The children, both in their habits, in their learning curve, can fall behind and it can take us months to recover from there. So this exercise that we are embarking on is not an exercise in babysitting that we meet them for one or two hours virtually. We are basically, as we're talking about working from home, we're talking the entire duration of the school. So there is very little flexibility there, except of course, when you've taken your lesson, you're preparing for the next lesson, or we'll still be having our meetings, we'll still be doing everything in the manner that we are doing from here. All our collaborative meetings, everything will happen as is. There is also a silver lining in this. This is also, this crisis necessitates invention. Like they say, necessity is the mother of invention. And in many ways, we may have even waited for this opportunity. Of course, not the best circumstances, but for us to bring all of our content <clears throat> and learning online to flip that entire experience. We've been getting ready with the learning management system for the longest time with Teamy, with Google Hangouts, but we never could really harness the power of this. And there is a lot of power in technology and now is the opportunity for us to learn now we'll probably hit that inflection point where perhaps we can change our entire pedagogy in line with what the future demands. It is also going to be a very trying time for you. Personally, professionally, you will need to give a lot of yourself to the children, not just in terms of knowledge, not just in terms of learning. I want to fall back 
on our three R's and in that order. Relationship, relevance and rigor. So we will have to maintain that one-on-one -on -one relationship with our children and many of these kids now, you'll be getting new kids, right? So you'll have to take that time in building that relationship with them. Whether it is one-on-one -on -one calls, whether it is sending out reflection sheets and learning about them, whether it is uh, sending out some sheets to the parents to learn about the kids, you'll really have to understand the kids without meeting them to be able to respond to their unique needs. Yeah. So that relationship is on the forefront and uh, just like the millennials have now completely transformed that relationship that they're actually able to relate online better than they're able to relate offline, it's an opportunity for us also to evolve in that sense. Okay. The second challenge is relevance. Building that hook. Building the answer to why they're learning what they're learning. Why should, be the, the, why should they be present for that session? Why should they be interested in that learning? Just like in our own community, we're trying to build a sense of larger purpose around this. This is not merely a transaction. This is not merely technical work. Yeah. We will have to build that sense of purpose. We will have to go that extra mile in our planning, in our preparation to build that sense of purpose. And third, then the rigor. And the rigor cannot be compromised. We can't let ourselves or the children get complacent in any way. And uh, there's a great likelihood that kids of our school may not be very excited about a long leave. They probably want to come back to school. They all love being in your classrooms. They all love being around other kids. So it's going to be challenging for them and they may then resort to all kinds of things at home. If we don't keep them engaged, then they might fall back on video games and all kinds of things. Yeah. These are also times when parents are going to be very anxious. Yeah. Some of them may have trying financial circumstances at jobs, working from home, Managing, imagine now two parents working from home and the child also working from home. <laughs> that may lead to a whole different kind of challenges. We'll have to support the parents also. Again, we'll have to wear the hat of caregivers more than teachers. We'll have to meet them with love and compassion. We'll have to meet them with patience. We'll have to meet them with curiosity. To go through this, we need a couple of things. One is a lot of vulnerability, ability to ask for help. And there's a lot of space to make mistakes. Don't worry. Nobody is holding you accountable for not running a perfect online lesson. We're all learning. We understand that. Don't be too hard on yourself. Make the effort ask for help, support each other, talk a lot to each other. Any place, don't, nothing is, if you don't know something, there is nothing to be ashamed of. Yeah, if you don't know the basics of, I've never used Google Hangouts in my life. Yeah, uh, I only have taken demos of teaming. If you put me on it, I'll be so scared uh, for the next 48 hours and then if you tell me to take lessons on it with children, I, I'll be petrified. But I'll also know if I have the support of my colleagues, I'll also know that if I put in effort, 
I'll learn and I'll get over those humps. And we're all there to support each other. We'll all learn it. There's, there's, there's no problem. There'll be good days, there'll be bad days, all kinds of things will happen. Support each other. Talk to each other. Be there. Share your problems. Don't be shy of saying, hey, I don't know. Would I look ridiculous if I didn't understand this? I've been at it for four days. Am I that dumb? Everybody else seems to be getting it. <laughs> don't have those thoughts. Yeah. We're all there for you. The helplines are there. Your friends, your colleagues, please, nobody is going to judge you. There will be times when you'll feel like, hey, what's This starting from the morning, going to the afternoon, doing this. Day after day, I don't even know if the kids are listening to me or not. And uh, I know in a couple of weeks, the kids will lose it completely. They'll say, nahi, ab nahi kar sakte or, you know, now I want a day off. Things will happen, but we'll all adapt to it. The kids will have a learning curve. We'll have a learning curve. Don't be too hard on yourselves. If we go through this long enough, just tell your tendency sometimes to give up. Don't give up. And don't let the kids give up. If we can hang in long enough, go through the first difficult steps and take one thing at a time, we'll be able to go through it extremely well. We'll come out brighter, we'll come out stronger, we'll come out wiser. I have absolutely no doubt about it. And this opportunity in that nature has presented to us, this crisis that has been presented to us will bring about something that I'm sure we'll look back at a couple of years from now and say, wow, this is the greatest thing that happened to our community.